Welcome to Dear Sandy. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking about Boscobel House and Gardens. It's just such a wonderful place. And uh, I have as my guest with me uh, Steve Miller, who is the executive director. Actually, it's Boscobel House and Gardens, I yes. guess, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And um, why do we call it Boscobel House and Gardens? Because the estate was originally called Boscobel when it was downriver in Montrose. And when it was recreated where it is now in Garrison, there's the house, the mansion, uh, but mm -hmm. we also have gardens. We have a lovely herb garden. We have a very beautiful uh, rose garden. And we have a small garden on the east side of the house. Plus we have a woodland trail where there are wildflowers. Right, which is so nice. And, you know, so tell us about this old house. I can't believe that they move houses the way they do. And this is not a little house. No, this is not. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is about 17 rooms. It was in Montrose uh, originally when it was built in 1808. Mm -hmm. And then it was going to be uh, scrapped. And some people in Garrison said, we can't let this happen. This is a very important federal period architectural gem. And one of the most important of those kinds of houses in America. And so they saved it. They bought it from the federal government. They took it apart. And they moved mm -hmm. it up piece by piece to Garrison. And they had it stored in barns and mm -hmm. under tarps and in people's garages. Oh, my goodness. Because then they had to say, OK, how are we going to put Humpty Dumpty back together, together again? again. <laughs> we've, we've saved the house. We've right. got we've to preserve it. <laughs> so they interested Lila Atchison Wallace. And she and her oh, husband were the founders Reader's of Reader's Digest. Digest. Right. And they were very keen on American uh, heritage projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a wing at the Metropolitan Museum of Art named for them. The beautiful flower arrangements that you see at the Met when mm -hmm. you go in there, that's an endowment from the Wallace Foundation. So she was invited to participate, and she bought 14 acres where we are now overlooking the Hudson River. You're right, really, we on are, the Hudson River. We, we are up on a bluff right. looking down, right. and it's the most incredible view, one of the great views in America, because the Hudson makes a bend there. Mm -hmm. So you're mm -hmm. looking south down the river, as well as west, over to West Point, mm -hmm. and uh, to the Catskill Mountains. And you're in Garrison, yes. right off of 9D, right. which 9D is parallel is our, to 9. is our, uh, one of our properties that go on either side of 9D, right. and we're right next to Cold Spring, which is important because Cold Spring has a lot of nice restaurants and shops, and mm -hmm. we always encourage people to do that when they come to see us. So was the, um, I'm just trying to think of the Boscoville House, was it, the, was the family on the wrong side yes. of uh, well, the American on, Revolution? It, <laughs> it depends on which side you're on. That's uh, true. <laughs> the, the money for the house was provided by states, S-T-A-A-T-S, Dykeman, as in Dykeman Street in New York, Dykeman mm -hmm. House, old Dutch family. He was on the, the British side during the American Revolution. And he was in New York City working for the British Quartermaster Corps. Uh, the British, you know, were in New York throughout the Revolution. Washington's troops left early on. So after the war, he stayed in this country, but he got an annuity because there was an investigation into the um, attorney general, by the attorney general of the Crown, I should say, uh, in England, mm -hmm. about what was going on in New York during the Revolution. He went over because he was one of the bookkeepers and could explain to the Crown that everything was copacetic. So the people he worked for were so thankful they gave him an annuity and that's the money that paid for Boscobel. Unfortunately he never lived to see it. He died, the foundation was built and he died. His wife, his widow, who was 21 years younger than he was, mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth Teichman, she built the house. So yeah. Boscobel survives because of mm -hmm. two women. It was built by Elizabeth Teichman and it right. was saved by Lila Atchison Wallace. Right, right. And it's such a wonderful house. I had an opportunity to go through it again um, in, in uh, 2015. And, uh, you know, you just, you just have such a feeling about what life was like. Of course, this was life for an upscale family. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but, you know, the goings on and, and so on. I mean, you walk into this beautiful house and they have, I, I, I'm trying to remember if that was considered the ballroom too, when mm -hmm. they'd have dances and so on. I can just imagine people coming with their flowing dresses exactly, on and so that's on. That's exactly correct. The house really is about beauty and Boscobel's about beauty, beautiful mm -hmm. wood. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
you know, the interior is of a period, the federal period, the beginning of the American Republic, mm -hmm. and it dates from the early period. We don't know exactly what furniture was there, but we have an inventory. So the rooms are uh, in the style of that time period. And it really is about being nouveau riche in mm -hmm. 1808. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. about being wealthy and buying the latest style in furniture mm -hmm. and decorative arts. So all the furniture you see there would have is old now. I mean, it's 200 mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it would have been brand new. Right. And it would have come, I'm assuming it would have come from a lot of other countries because um, people wanted to have furniture from mm -hmm. France, right? And, yeah, and, and that other was places, and, and there the was style. There, that style, that whole empire style period was very popular in England, France, um, mm -hmm. Edwardian and earlier. Um, that, not Edwardian, that's later. But a lot of the furniture was from New York because New York was one of the cabinet making centers in the United States. And one of the best cabinet makers was Duncan Fife. Was that was in, in New, New York, York City? City? Yes. In New York City. And so a lot mm -hmm. of the furniture that we have now is in the style of Duncan Fife or reflects mm -hmm. his design. Uh, last year we bought a piece at auction that is by Duncan Fife. It's upstairs in the guest room. It's a huge closet, if you will, linen closet. Mm -hmm. So we're always looking to upgrade that. the collection, do something new with it, but mm -hmm. the rooms are just gorgeous. And I'm glad you mm -hmm. like them because we're open for tours, as you know. Uh, you know, uh, we're closed on Tuesday and otherwise we're open for, for guided tours. And our docents really are our teachers. Right. And they're very well schooled right. in what it was like to live back then, it, particularly if you were uh, wealthy. And the mm -hmm. hall of the house that you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. was a place for social events. Mm -hmm. I can just you imagine know? going there. I would have loved it. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been Why a lot not? of fun. I go there every day. It's terrific. <laughs> I'm not dancing day. and I'm not eating in the house. <laughs> but it's pretty nice. It is. And um, it really is our, our audience absolutely loves it. Our, our, our visitors, just they, they are just so delighted with what they see there and the mm -hmm. tours that our docents give. So the, I know the tour was on the main floor and then upstairs. Yes. Um, I, I think that was it. Is there anything else? You ended up at the, in, the, in the lower level going out the kitchen. Oh, right. Where you right. got cider mm -hmm. and cookies. That's right. right. Absolutely. That's absolutely. one of our most popular parts of the right. tour. So they had, you know, well, the sitting room. So the, the first floor is, is basically for, the, um, for their friends and, and relatives and yeah, their the meetings. Exactly. And the first so floor on. is very formal. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have the hall, the grand entry hall, which we use for events mm -hmm. uh, and programs and things like that. You have the dining room, which is very formal. Mm -hmm. You have the front parlor, which is formal. You have the back parlor, which is more of a family room. Mm -hmm. It's kind mm -hmm. of a formal, informal family room, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. And then you go upstairs, and those are the bedrooms and a library. Mm -hmm. And that really is not a public space or a place where you might have family un or visitors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most mm -hmm. of the entertaining would be take place on the first floor. Right. So how do you go about getting additional furniture? You said you've gotten yeah. this this uh, one cabinet yes. and so on. Do you, do you always have... Uh, people looking for different kinds of furniture? We always, I, I love acquisitions. I've been in the museum field, I like to say, all my life, because even when I was a little kid, I was hanging around museums. Mm -hmm. And I love acquisitions because those are the things you get bring into a museum that are gonna be there forever. Mm -hmm. And people mm -hmm. are gonna enjoy them. So while we have the best collection, one of the best collections of New York federal period furniture, there are always areas that you can trade up, if you will, or improve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have occasionally sold things but the money from that is dedicated to other acquisitions later on. Right. It's not to pay the light bill or fix the roof mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. So what happened was um, one of our board members, who's a former curator at the Metropolitan Museum of Art mm -hmm. in the American Wing, brought two pieces to my attention. Oh. And one is a chair that's in the front parlor now, and one was the mm -hmm. piece I just mentioned, which is upstairs in the uh, guest room. Mm -hmm. And they really are a nice upgrade for our collection. Uh, even though the collection is fabulous the way it is, I always like to see if we can tweak it a little bit. Right. Well, actually, if people come back, um, yeah. you know, they might want to see something. They might. If there is something I mean, the, different, the, something The special. oddball thing about museums, and I define Bosque Bell as a museum, right. you have to change but stay the same. Right. Because people, my God, you, if you change something, they, they have a conniption fit. Uh -huh. But they want to see something new. Right. So you gradually change this. And what we did two years ago was we changed the front hall that you were talking about, right. where, w which was the social center of the house. Uh, during the months that were closed, January, February, and March, 
We redid the wallpaper, we redid the floor covering, we mm -hmm, redid the paint. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's a completely new look f in keeping with that period. Right, right. But it's, it, it was a I remember project. the wallpaper was really pretty. And I was going to ask gorgeous. you, what, I mean, I guess after a while, um, wallpaper or, or upholstery, even though people aren't necessarily sitting on things, but I guess just after a while. Well, the floor covering was an oilcloth floor covering, and that was mm -hmm. just deteriorating from age. People were walking on it. Mm -hmm. So we had another new one made, because that was new. Mm -hmm. And the wallpaper was done because uh, the way wallpaper is made now is not the way it would have been made 200 years ago, with the exception right. of a firm in upstate New York that makes mm -hmm. it the old-fashioned way. And, and it's block printed. So oh. the wallpaper you'll see in the entry hall is, right. is eight colors. Each uh -huh. color is a separate block. And there's a strip of paper, and they put the yellow on, and they put the red on, and they put the blue on. And then it comes to us, uh -huh. and we hire a guy from Nashville who knows how to install it as it would have been right. installed 200 years ago. Oh he goodness. cuts it and puts it in place. So it, the, the old wallpaper that was up there was very uh -huh. nice, and it was historically appropriate, but it was right. silkscreen. So it was very oh, flat. Right, this has right. a lot more texture to it. Right. Is that expensive? It was, it was expensive. expensive. I don't remember the price. Multiple. But again, right. that came out of the funds that were obtained through the deaccessioning of collections. Right, right. So where do you get your revenue? You know, we talked yes. about, mm -hmm. you know, wonderful benefactors and so on. How do you... you know, museums have income in four ways. They get it through endowment income, earned income, grants, and individual giving. We, Lila Atchison Wallace established a... Um, fund for basketball, a restricted trust. Mm -hmm. And that's the majority of our income. But we also are involved in earned income. And this year, for the first time, we started an annual appeal, mm -hmm. uh, sending mm -hmm. out letters uh, asking people for donations. Mm -hmm. So that we're doing more and more of that. Because we're, while we're se financially secure, anything mm -hmm. more that we want to do on top of what we already do, we have to raise money for. Mm -hmm. And w our board is very conservative, as they should be. Mm -hmm. And we don't you know, waste a dollar, uh, mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. is, is very tidy in that respect. Mm -hmm. Does the federal government uh, have grants and so on? For yes. Or have they cut back a lot? They have some area. grants, NEA, National Endowment for the Arts, National Endowment for the right. Humanities. Those are program driven. Mm -hmm. The hardest mm -hmm. money to raise is for operating money, and that's right. what, say, the annual campaign is for and something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're fortunate, thank you, Mrs. Wallace, for mm -hmm. that re in that respect. But uh, one of our great earned income areas is through renting pieces of our property for weddings, for mm -hmm. you know, parties and things like that, because of the view. It's, a, it's literally it's a, a million dollar view. Absolutely. It is one of the great views in America. Right. I, I, I try to go out, and I don't care if it's winter, spring, summer, or fall. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. try to get out there because it is just breathtaking. Right. And the weddings aren't in the house. No. I see these big tents right. going up usually in the springtime. Yeah, they will, people will rent a piece of the property and they pay a fee. And then mm -hmm. they, we have some uh, pre-qualified uh, caterers that we use and mm -hmm. tent companies. And they'll come in and put up these big tents. And it's a lot of fun. I love to see weddings on the property. They're really right. having a good time and they're enjoying themselves. Well, I can just imagine the the uh, wedding couple with the, with the view of the Hudson right. River. And then if they want to turn around, having the view of Boscobel behind they, them. The so. bride and groom can be photographed in the main hall of the house. Oh, good. Um, okay. and, and come out the front door, which is mm -hmm. usually what mm -hmm. happens. But they always will, they, they will get married on the Belvedere, which is that overlook that we have for the river. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely mm -hmm. lovely. And uh, it's very popular. I mean, we book ahead two or, th two or three years for weddings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So the people that take us through the house, and I mm -hmm. must say the docent They're that we had good. was so really good. Well. Are, are those, how do they get trained? Are they volunteers no. or is it a mix? They're or? a paid, that's a paid mm -hmm. position. And we've mm -hmm. had them for a very long time. We've added two new ones recently. One retired. Uh, we have a wonderful young woman, Elizabeth, um, who's just uh, from Marist. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's terrific and a, a new gentleman who's joined us. It's a long, rigorous training process. And there's a curriculum, basically, that they study mm -hmm. uh, because you never know what questions the public oh, is going no to ask. Idea. Right. And, you know, they, there's a lot of information to give. I mean, the tours right. are 40 minutes to an hour, mm -hmm. and they pack mm -hmm. a lot in there. We talk about history. Mm -hmm. We talk about art. We talk about the decorative mm -hmm. arts. Mm -hmm. We talk about the location. Mm -hmm. We talk about the history of the house, the, the kinds of things we're talking about right now. Right. It really is an historic lesson. It, it's really great. It it's better, it actually, almost than reading a book, although I love to read a book about history. But, but you're, I, you're right there. Every yeah. room is, is kind of like talking about what was going on during that period of time. Well, museums teach through objects. 
So when mm -hmm. people, when you're in that environment, you're enjoying the lifestyles of the rich and famous in mm -hmm. 1808, mm -hmm. and you're, it, it communicates in a way that's a different way of communication than through the written word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. And just the, the functioning of, of the kitchen. Yes. Um, it's totally different. One of our, you know, the, the people zero in on things that they're familiar with. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there are various potties, for instance, in the house, and that right. always elicits a response. You know? Right. Oh yes, uh, there were some unusual ones, yeah. if I remember. Correctly. And then, uh, right. then there's the kitchen, which is at the end of the tour, mm -hmm. where you get some cider and, a, and mm -hmm. cookies, which is always popular. But mm -hmm. we talk about what it was like to live in a house like that and be cooking in that kind of mm -hmm. an environment, mm -hmm. which is quite different than uh, the kitchen today. Right. Yes, just a little different. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We, you know, you think back and you say, how did they do it back then? Well, they did it 24-7. I mean, there's a right. fire in the fireplace all the time. Right, yes. I mean, you, you know, keep the home fires burning. I mean, right. they are, it's, life was not easy. Um, but they made, made do with what they had and did pretty well. Yeah, this is like going backwards, but can you tell where it was pieced together? This house that was divided up and then put back together? No, can you and see the, be parts the, of the it beauty of it is... There were um, meticulous architectural drawings done of the house by Westchester County mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. 1932, mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. it was dismantled and brought up there. So when it was taken apart, we had they, they had these architectural drawings to work from when they put it back together again. So while the walls themselves might not be original, all the woodwork is. The, and, mm -hmm. and so the fireplaces and, the, and you know where the windows are and that mm -hmm, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it is meticulously restored in that respect. Mm. That's just really great. So let's talk about your house and gardens. Let's talk right. about those gardens again because whether you go through Basketball the House or you're up for a, a Shakespeare, mm -hmm. which we'll get to, Shakespeare production, you often do go through the Rose Garden. You do. And we and make so that on. part of our tour. Now, the, most people go to the Herb Garden after the tour because mm -hmm. we have a lot to cover on the tour. Mm -hmm. But you meet in front of the carriage house there, which was not an original part of the Dykeman mm -hmm. property in Montrose. And then you go through the Rose Garden, which was a Lila Atchison Wallace edition. And when oh. we walk through there, we right. tell the story of the saving of the house as we get to the house there. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. gardens are very popular. And if you're w renting it for a wedding, oftentimes mm -hmm. well, people will get married on the Belvedere, they'll mm -hmm. have cocktails in the Rose Garden, and they'll have dinner in one of the tents that you talked about. Wow, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. And the herb garden has, um, is that the one that has a little, it has a, a little kind of, um, I don't know what you call it, just a, like a little pottery home? Yes, or? that's called an orangerie. Oh, okay, And All it's right. a place, right. it, it's based on, you see them a lot in southern plantations and, and uh, houses there. It was mm -hmm. where you put orange trees and things like that in the winter and there are two big fireplaces in there. Yes, yes. So that yes. those trees would survive right. the cold winters in this part of the country. Hmm. And that's, w that's run by the Phillipstown Garden Club. And they mm -hmm. take care of it every week. They're there Tuesday mornings. It's fat. My office looks right there. I go over and chat right. with them because I don't know very much about gardening. Right. And they're just fabulous. That's great. So I guess I wouldn't be a very good tour guy because I don't have all the, the knowledge and the words. We can teach you. You can teach me. <laughs> anyway. Well, I can't <laughs> give a tour. I've been there two and a half years. I haven't learned So it. tell me about the tour. You're, you're closed, you said, January, February, March, March and then right. open up mm -hmm. in April. Um, and so, when when are the ba are the tours? The tours are every forty five minutes. Right. The time tours, and you get a ticket at the information desk at the admissions mm -hmm. desk, mm -hmm. and uh, you, or you can just go and buy a ticket for the property if you don't want to get in the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now there there are two different structures. There. I think it's eighteen dollars right. for house and gardens and eleven just for the right. just for the property. Some people just come, and also I'm pushing membership now. A lot of mm -hmm. people in the area will become members, and they use it as kind of their private park because then they can come on. And right. enjoy the view and enjoy the property anytime. Right. So is it um, pretty much every day, or we're closed on Tuesdays? On Tuesdays. Otherwise, okay. we're open. So uh, right. In November, right. we close at four. Otherwise, we're open to five because it mm -hmm. gets dark by mm -hmm. four, and you're not going to see much in the house then. So I'd come up with a, a garden club group right. um, for for that particular tour and so on. So uh, does that happen a lot that organizations yes. decide? You know, this is our we are, our we tourist are, destination. Um, we are a, a tourist destination for group tours and bus tours in particular. Talk, T-A-U-C-K, mm -hmm. is a famous uh, international high style uh, tour mm -hmm. company. And there's one that they give that starts in Montreal, 
and it comes mm -hmm. down the Hudson and ends up in Tarrytown. We're one of the stops on that, oh. on that tour. This is very competitive and they're very hard right. to get. Uh, and in fact, there's been a reduction in a lot of these bus tours as, as generations have changed mm -hmm. and are not so interested in that. But we get garden clubs, we get museum tours. Uh, we've had museums in Texas who have you know, booked a tour of Boscoville because they come up to the Northeast. And, oh. uh, or Michigan or something like that. Just like we go down to the LBJ Ranch, exactly. they go up. It's, it, yeah. yeah, they come up to the Hudson Valley because the right. Hudson Valley is rich with American history. Absolutely. And it's beautiful American history. I mean, it's, it's up and down the river, so right. we're in a good spot. Well, actually, people should really think about that. And, and in, the, in the nicer months, just go visit all the different sites It is just along extraordinary. The Hudson I, I graduated from, I went to Bard College. And so I know some of the properties up there in Rhinebeck mm -hmm. and, and Hyde Park. And I, I was aware of Boscobel and I've been to Lyndhurst. But even there's more now, Olana wasn't uh, open when I was at Bard, but it is now. Mm -hmm. And there are just gorgeous, incredibly, mm -hmm. very important properties in the history of mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. Because that's pretty much where a lot of it started, right along that. Well, Hudson and River, also, that's for you sure. know, and the Hudson River School of Artists. Um, you know, we do exhibitions. We do one a year, mm -hmm. and we will often emphasize that. You know, the Hudson River School was the first native. So you do art that school. with within Boscobel. Yes, you have we have a gallery in the lower level of the mansion, right. where we will do exhibitions, mm -hmm. and we do one a year, and we often will focus on an, a Hudson River mm -hmm. Valley School artist, mm -hmm. or the subject. I did one. I was I curated one last year. Uh, about it. There was a print collection that was done in the 1820s. And um, mm -hmm. it, it goes from New York City to Troy, above Troy. Right. And it really marked the beginning of uh, the, the Hudson River as a subject for artists. A very important movement in this mm -hmm. country, the first native born American art movement. Well, you can really do a painting in every different section, it almost looks like a different part of the Hudson River yeah. because it really moves and changes. And, and yeah, every so uh, second or third Tuesday of the month, when we're normally closed, artists mm -hmm. are allowed to come on the property and paint. Oh, that must be fun. And we'll have fun. 10, 15, 20 artists out there. You know, right, painting. right. So let me ask you about, uh, uh, also on your property, um, Shakespeare Theater has productions. Right. Um, probably, I'm trying to think, June through, through early through, September uh, the end or of something August, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And um, they have a big tent that they, they put huge up, tent, yeah. huge tent, yeah. and uh, they have the production. So what's the relationship with you and them? Hudson River, uh, Hudson Valley Shakespeare Festival is their legal name, mm -hmm. is a 501c3 private entity. We're the landlords for them, mm -hmm. and they've been mm -hmm. coming to us for 29 years now. And we love them. They put this huge space age tent there mm -hmm. that seats mm -hmm. 500 people. Right. And they do fantastic productions. Mm -hmm. They don't mm -hmm. really have a stage with props. Our landscape Your is their land stage. Your land is the stage. Our right. view yes. is, the, is the backdrop for right. the stage. Right. And they love that. And they really take advantage of it. And before the play, uh, people can come and picnic on our property and then, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. go and see a play. It's just a wonderful asset. Right. It and really, a great partnership. It really is. And they do have great productions. And you they see the, the actors coming up. It almost looks like they're coming up at it from the Hudson yeah, right, River. Right, you right, know right. that they're not wet. So right. Well, they come, <laughs> I know, it looks like they're coming up from <laughs> Constitution Marsh, which right. turtles do in the spring. That's right. Constitution Marsh, which we overlook, has about a thousand snapping turtles. Don't you get don't you get the turtles up on your property? They do. Too? They come up and lay their eggs. And, and then what do, do you do next? And we do a program with the Constitution Marsh folks right. called Turtle Walk where we talk about that. The uh -huh. the, the right. females come up, lay their eggs, go back into the marsh. Mm -hmm. A couple of months mm -hmm. later, the eggs hatch if the raccoons, the fox, the possum didn't get to it. Right. And these little baby turtles, they're about that, uh -huh. make their way back into back the marsh. In. It's unbelievable. Right, it's right. Just what, ti what time of year is that? Well, the end of March. Uh -huh. um, end of March. Okay. Actually, April is when they do that, uh -huh. and, and May. And then June or July, we'll find them working their way back. Right, that it's is just, incredible. And these are prehistoric creatures. I right. mean, this has been going on a long time. Right, just like the house. Yeah. And, <laughs> Before and one the, the house, probably. Exactly. One of the things about the setting is, you know, we've talked about 1808, we've talked about the Hudson Valley. The mm -hmm. fact that West Point is across the river mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. of great interest to our visitors. They love mm -hmm, that. And mm -hmm. we have a good relationship with West Point. Mm -hmm. We've borrowed things from their museum. We have a couple of retired West Point colonels on our board. And it's really, it's terrific to have them there. Right, it's, it's such a wonderful location. Yeah. Now you have some other things that are going on too. I know there's a little gift store. I always love that place. Yes. 
Um, and, and that you're keeping open longer? We, we open that late when we have Shakespeare plays going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a delightful gift shop. Uh, Renate Smoller is our gift shop manager. I always encourage people to visit and spend mm -hmm. money. You know? mm -hmm. But it's a lot of fun and she does a great job. We're doing more now with uh, education programming, particularly in the community. And if anybody has an interest in having our educator come to their classrooms, mm -hmm. they should mm -hmm. contact us because that's something new we started a year ago. And we hired a woman who is really great at going into the classroom and we teach local history through Boscobel history, and we do it in the classroom. Oh, now schools can come to Boscobel, of course, right? But we have found that by going into the classroom with our programs, particularly first grade, second grade, third mm -hmm, grade, fourth mm -hmm. grade, for that early New York State American history, mm -hmm, uh, with mm -hmm. our learning objects, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. again we're we're object based learning, right. is very effective, right. and we've just started that. Do most of them want to come to Boscobel after that, or not they, necessarily? They do. Or they do. And right. well, we, we give them discount tickets and things right. like that. We don't charge very much for that sort of thing because we want to get them on the property. So, for instance, we've had some classes come, and when we had an exhibition about the Hudson River, a Hudson River School artist, mm -hmm, these, mm -hmm. this class came and spent the afternoon painting the view. Oh, that's wonderful. And these I are like eighth graders. These they were on the ball. Kids sitting there. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. of fun. It is. It is. It is. That's that is just yeah. really great. And then, you know, I've been up there too when you, you're housing now the uh, um, food market. The yes, the uh, Cold Spring Farmers, Farmers market. market. Yeah, uh, that started about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's in our lower parking lot area. And it's on Saturday mornings from 8.30 to 1.30. Mm -hmm. Local grown mm -hmm. produce and, and other things. And my wife and I are usually at a table there promoting Boscobel, talking to people. It's mm -hmm. a lot of fun mm -hmm. and it's very effective. And really, it brings people to our property and the property is open mm -hmm. free from 8.30 to 1.30 on those Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the people can just wander they around? Can all all, all we ask is get a sticker right. so we can keep track of you and off right. you, know, you go. So how do you think about the next things that you're going to be doing? Well, um, I want to I develop our education programs. I really am excited mm -hmm. about that. I want to head in that direction. We're doing a marketing survey right now for our visitors with Marist College. I mean, you can't mm -hmm, get mm -hmm. any better than that. Right. And we're just beginning to get some initial returns. Our visitors are very happy with the programs that we offer, the tours in particular. Mm -hmm. um, I want to do tours in the house for kids, which mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. we can do. Um, and I want to use more of the property uh, mm -hmm. so we can have programming there. Um, and we're thinking about how we're going to change the exhibition program. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to be there. You know, sometimes when you're in a place a long time, you're the one that wants to make change, but everybody else is very happy with it <laughs> you know, when, they, when they come to visit. And the right. survey is, is proving the point. I mean, they just love us, and they love what right. our docents do. And, and you've just recently been honored as the we, wonderful destination yeah, in the Hudson Valley. You know, for Valley. design. I mean, we're mm -hmm. one of the principal places to come, along with Manitoga. Right. Uh, down the down the road from us, uh, which is a post World War II uh, modern house that's just incredible. Very different from our period, but still it's about design mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's about setting and it's about landscape, which is what we're all about. Right. So people wanting to know more about what you have to offer, um, I, I went on your website. Yeah, our website you is have great. Everything. Go on, on our website www.boscobell.org. And um, you know, call me. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I'm very easy to get a hold of. I love talking to people. Uh, you want to book a tour? We have a great guy who handles all of that. Um, rent it for an event or something like that. And also, I'm, as I said, I'm very keen on these education programs. I particularly want to get to the school kids. Right. Well, your mission is great. Yeah. Um, the house is wonderful. The gardens beautiful, are beautiful too. Place. And I'd encourage everybody. Well, thank you so much for inviting us You're to be welcome. here today. You're we welcome. have a lot of fun with it. And that. I encourage my constituents to please come in and uh, have a tour of Boscobel. If you have any questions, please give me a call at 914-941-1111. Thank you so much thank for being so with much, us. Thank you so much, Sandy. Good to be here.